Hi, it's Maria. Welcome to another Maria Unfiltered. And this video series is From Forgiveness to Love. And so um, here we're going to learn about the dark and the dark that each of us must face and why. Why is that so prevalent in our lives? Why do we have to undergo so much torment um, and sadness? in our lives in order to suffer and then um, hopefully use that suffering in order to come out the other end. But in the meantime, while we're in the muck and the mire of it, it's a very uncomfortable place. And so you will see how Forgiveness to Love is really my most difficult um, video series to share with you. But And I reveal aspects of life never before shared because in the past when I tried to share it, I'd been told that um, that it was that my videos were being blocked and that I had a very, very small audience and it was kind of uh, hand selected to be those who totally disagreed with what I had to say. And so if they were going to put any comments on it would be ridiculous comments. So, um, but I did hear my, that my family was involved in um, in narrowing my uh, audience, and so um, all I can do is just put it out as like many of you who are um, who are telling the truth. And so, um, as we join together to um, to share some light in an otherwise. Um, dark situation for many of us because it is a planetary situation. It's not even a personal issue anymore. It is something that we are all going through um, to various degrees. And so I had creepos and stalkers and others on uh, my siblings' payroll that were blocking my messages and my videos and uh, trying every which way to shut me up. But, um, you know, I learned the hard way. Uh, that unhe unceasing harassment and torture were tools used by the dark um, by many against many of us to destroy us and um, and to destroy those of us who stood for truth and justice because that's really what we're here to do is we are standing up we are standing up for ourselves and we are standing up uh, bringing messages of truth and so I was stalked and followed and poisoned and punished. And uh, many of you like me may wonder um, how some can put on such a good show, you know, and they can tell so many lies and turn so many people against us. And, but that's what the dark does. They're very good at that. And um, now we've learned from many of the uh, videos on narcissists that are on the internet that uh, that people with dark souls focus on hurting um, the rest of us. And so when that mask falls off, you know, the darkness kind of lunges out at us to poison us, kind of like uh, an unforgiving rattler if you will, that's kind of the best way I can explain it, which is that, you know, you don't even see it um, on the ground. And yet all of a sudden, you know, it just snaps and grabs us. But under the mask, you know, is the ugliness that creates the discomfort and the pain that's neither make believe nor fantasy, but actual uh, truth. And so despite so very many consequences, you know, in harming a fellow human being, the dark really at times can seem unrelenting. And so many have revealed the notion that um, those in their unawakened state, you know, may choose to ignore that which um, they are, which is divine beings. But how in the world can the dark possibly embrace that aspect of themselves, you know, or that aspect of ourselves? And so it goes that what they resist persists. And so when I speak of the dark being outside of ourselves, you know, I'm, I'm uh, doing that in such a way to um, facilitate uh, my explanation 
of of this throughout this series and you'll see by the time you get to the end of it um everything will have changed but um they do they refuse the dark refuses to take heed and so they continue their damage and they continue to inflict the pain with their every action and so at the same time you know they're given every opportunity to find the light um, and to make better choices, but really it's up to them. It's not up to us to uh, reach out to the dark and to um, in some way uh, embrace, uh, coerce them into seeing the light. It, that's not our job. You know, our job is to take care of us and the dark will take care of themselves. And so, um, what they do is they try to drag us down into the gutter with them. But again, uh, we go only if we choose to go. We're not to go. That's not part of our life path, truly, unless we still have more healing to accomplish. And so, but uh, the gutter is where they find comfort because it's an all too familiar environment for them. And so to overcome the darkness, you know, um, they choose and to excel to become their very best self is frightening for the dark because they're not familiar with that. And it's an uncomfortable feeling because they're used to feeling really um, badly about themselves. Remember um, in one of my other videos that I wrote, it's that the dark detests being in the dark, but they just don't know another way out. They're so conditioned to being uh, of that personality. And so this is um, contrast. And we've been called to the battlefield, you know, where the most noteworthy of all battles in the history of humanity is actually being um, being battled out. <laughs> I don't know how to say that better, but it's actually being fought. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So um, the battle is of the light versus the dark. And so um, this is for your discernment. All is not as it seems. And in reality, you believe um, to be the life on this planet. It's, um, remember, uh, that we do, we live in the matrix. And so things are, um, things are not as they seem. And the reality that we believe is, is real is so unreal, in fact. But we're here to experience all of the emotions uh, that we are able to. And so this is the planet where we're given the opportunity to see extremes in so very many um, aspects of our life here. And so you have the right to choose. You know, you've all been given free will. And the question, the questions are, how will you use it? And what will you do? And I'll show you how to take a look, a hard look, at yourself when there's darkness all around. Because you see, we must take responsibility for all. Um, for all of us have let it in and we've played with it. So this is key because for me, you know, I've been made aware of a plethora of plots and plans to do me in, to torture me and even to kill me. And so to extinguish my light, you know? And so I can assure you that I'm not alone though. Many of you have unknowingly fallen victim to the same types of attacks that have been on my life. You just may not have um, been fully aware of what was going on. You know, I've spoken um, at length with various law enforcement agencies and what I learned will shock you. And I think I, I did mention it in one of the other videos though. Um, I was actually told that many of the heart attacks that our friends and our family members have experienced are not really um, cardiac in origination, if you will, because it, they're actually the result of poisonings. And so um, the poison was, is um, strategically, strategically precipitates a cardiac event. And so when you think of this from a higher perspective, we've really reached the tipping point, you know, and it's time for us to move forward because we're, we're just obliterating, you know, the human race by, um, by all of this subterfuge and all of this sabotaging and all of this uh, malevolent behavior to try to 
really extinguish the light. And so um, we we just can't continue on this cheap merry-go-round. It's it's not right, and that's what we're here to do. We are here to to share our light, and we are here to tell the truth, and we are here to, if we're not here to awaken anyone else because we have no control of how they view their life, we're here to continue our own awakening and our own expansion of our soul. And so um, when we connect with our soul, um, we can continue to connect with our soul or we can continue yielding to distractions, you know, of the outer world and face our own demise. So it's really up to us. This is really a really interesting time because um, we have the power. We have the power. We have the control. We have um, everything we need to create whatever life we choose. And so remember, in life, um, the energy that we send out is returned to us uh, in a perfect form for our soul's recognition. And so, you know, the energy boomerangs back, right? So now is the time to shut out the darkness. And the darkness is really our subconscious. And so the darkness destroys human beings and then it laughs at the casualties. I mean, isn't that, that's just disgusting, really. And so it's almost as if we've seen these gross cartoons, you know, with the ugly, with the ugly creepos, you know, booby trapping Bambi and bunnies and butterflies and you. And we say, no, 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 no. We don't want to see any of that, right? Because um, we don't want to hear about booby trapping. And yet, um, we only want to hear about good and kind and loving energies. After all, we're all about love and light, right? But, um, you know, when you're targeted, um, you become enshrouded in darkness and can't avoid or escape the darkness. So what can you do? You know, what, what can you do truly? And so the more you resist something, as we said, the more it persists. So we have to recognize um, the many twisted and wounded and mentally ill human beings on the earth plane. And um, why why is that? Why are they suffering so? Could be because of repressed emotions, you know, of anger and hatred and envy and jealousy and violence and rage, you know, um, or the propensity for violence and rage. And um, because all of those those really horrible emotions... Um, and self-destructive emotions, I might add, are bubbling up to the surface. And so um, there's no more hiding or masking, you know, the buried pain. It's it's coming up. And at the same time, we ask, you know, who behaves so crazily and so maniacally and why? And, you know, of course, it's the people in our lives. And those people generally are our friends and family and coworkers. And so... Those who smile at us, you know, those whom we trust that are actually wearing masks to manipulate us, you know, those, those types. Well, what we're seeing now is the times are really changing on the planet and the energy of humanity is um, now shifting and the energy of the planet, that's what I just said, the energy of the planet is shifting and the time is now and you know forgive me it's it's after 10 o'clock at night and i'm just a little tired so it's coming out uh my words are a little difficult right now but um i i so wanted to get this message to you so so please yes do forgive me and um understand that i am doing my best and so um the time for judgment and justice is now, truly. And it's the time for us to be responsible and accountable for all of our choices, right? And so our soul is calling for us to shine, you know, and to get out of the quick quick sand, you know, to safety. Remember the kind of the visual of the quicksand, you know, it's just like somebody there and they, they are trying so hard to get out of the quicksand and yet the quicksand is kind of drawing them down into the abyss. And so, you know, it's, it's time, you know, we just have to get out. Otherwise we're going to go down. And so, um, and part of that, part of, uh, the darks, um, 
uh, the dark's methods for bringing us down is to inundate us with distractions. And they've done a very good job of that because the distractions are all about money, 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 food, 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 and sex, sex, sex right? And so when you have um, the dark seducing our partners and you have all of these commercials about all of this food and, and all of these things that you have to go out and buy and in order to keep up with the Joneses or whatever, um, and people are offered bribes and there are all these quick rich schemes and um, there's lying and gossiping to cause pain and humiliation and embarrassment and people don't feel good enough because they they don't have they can't get uh everything that that supposedly we're supposed to want to get you know and the dark follows us they sabotage us and uh the local thugs actually followed me into a pizza restaurant uh, last week, a few days ago. And uh, what did they do with my order? Well, because I have had a history of being poisoned since since my marriage, when my ex-husband started poisoning me to get my money. Um, and then my uh, I absolutely uh, believe that my my sibling and my son have continued in order to uh, try to end my life. And so um, as we think about that, you know, um, our meals are tampered. And, and it's not just a coincidence that we really feel sick after we eat or we start to have pain or we, you know, things just aren't right or we we um, we vomit. Or, and so those are chemicals in our body. And all of a sudden, my body has created all these cysts on various organs. And, and I can actually feel after I eat where that poison is affecting my body. And so, um, so, uh, and again, when law enforcement told me that, that, you know, it's so easy, you just spray a little extra Roundup or something on, on food or whatever. Uh, it's so, uh, ridiculously easy. And of course I, um, had a history of being poisoned, not only as I mentioned from my ex, but then I was, um, I was standing on a doorstep for, uh, driving nursery school carpool and all of a sudden landscapers you know with these long hoses and they were spraying the trees and bushes with the pesticide they sprayed me and so for five years i was very ill i was the woman in the bubble and i think in in my video yesterday i spoke about being the woman in the bubble but i didn't really speak and i spoke about going to the mayo clinic twice and i spoke about doctors telling me i wasn't going to make it but i didn't really i don't think i mentioned exactly how i became the woman in the bubble and yes it was um landscapers who who um poisoned me with dousing me with a landscaping pesticide and uh it wasn't until it wasn't until about eight years later that my attorneys actually told me that my ex-husband admitted to them and to his therapist that he had he had paid the landscapers for that. And so um, do I have any proof of that? No, other than being told that by professionals and uh, people that he entrusted with, um, with the knowledge, um, with his disclosures of of um, how he really, really wanted to get rid of me. But um, but anyway, that's, so be careful, watch what you eat, watch who you get your food from. And when you don't feel well, um, take heed and pay attention to what it is you ate. And uh, yeah, be very mindful of, um, of restaurants and things like that because um, you just never know. Um, what happens to the food um, before it gets to your table. And so I'm not trying to um, frighten anyone. I'm just trying to make you aware only because of my own experience and what I was told by, um, by several people. And so, um, yes, and, and actually, you know, never in my wildest dreams did I believe that anything like that would ever go on in my life. And yet, um, you know, when there are plans, uh, when you have, when you have something that people want, or when you're telling the truth, or when your light shines brightly, 
um, yeah, there are, there are people out there who want to dim you, who want to, um, uh, yes, who want to exterminate you, kind of like a rodent, who, um, who don't want you to survive until your next birthday, who, um, but you know, uh, a lot of this has been going on for, this is not new. <laughs> this has been going on for years and years and years and decades and centuries. And yet, you know, this is a fabulous time to be alive because all of a sudden we're becoming aware of this. So we can be more mindful and we can take those extra precautions um, as, as best we can, you know. And so... Um, so that's what the dark does. They target innocent people. And so, um, and the dark thrives on derision and division, you know. Um, yes, what is it? Uh, united we stand, divided we fall. That's true. And um, violence and, of course, drugs and alcohol and processed everything, you know, to weaken human beings. And so don't believe me. Just think for yourself. Take a look around and you'll see that human beings, by and large, feel lost. You know, both the perpetrators and the victims, actually, because there's a lack of boundaries and um, of manners and of decorum, you know? I was thinking about this the other day. You know, who really says what they mean and means what they say? Um, anyone? I don't know. And people, when I was a little girl, we didn't get anything or I didn't get anything unless I said please or and then my mother waited for a thank you, you know, um, but it seems like it seems like now people don't say please and thank you. I don't even know if it's still in the dictionary or I beg your pardon or excuse me, um, but instead it's it's like, um, I don't even know what people say anymore, but it's like, yeah, or duh, or uh, man, or whatever, or no problem. <laughs> I don't know. But as you think think of that, you know, it's kind of, it's, um, it's a reflection of how we treat ourselves and how we treat another and how we treat our planet. I mean, when you think about it, our planet and its oceans and its mountains and its valleys, you know, have become kind of giant garbage dumps for for humanity, you know. Um, and so when you think about it, who is it whom we respect? And what is it that we respect? Do we respect each other? Um, do you think that we respect each other? Do you respect uh, others and do you feel respected? I think that there's really a shortage of, of feeling respected at this point in time. Um, and I think that's been really true uh, as we think about uh, divorce and family law because um, that whole situation, uh, the whole process actually has made a mockery of the family structure. You know, kids are orphaned, uh, parents are destroyed, human beings wallow in envy and jealousy and lying and cheating and thieving and trying to point the finger at the other parent and, or the other spouse. And remember Jesus, um, he reached his threshold when he said, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. And so he kind of cut through the BS that keeps people from knowing who they truly are. And so remember when he was dealing with the money changers and he was t throwing the tables over because they were cheating the people. And so whether there's lying or cheating or embezzling or money laundering, I mean, that's been going on for um, centuries. And so it's our time on earth is, is very short. And it's time for us to focus on showing up as our very best selves 
don't you think? It's our very best self, <laughs> unless there's more than one of us. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a beginning and an ending to our life. And so we can't afford to waste it. We really can't because we're here to focus on our spiritual evolution. And um, we need to focus on, on the expansion of our soul because we are. That's what we are. We're a soul. We're an eternal being. And so this is kind of like um, a pit stop or um, a, st a bus stop, you know, as the bus travels, or the train, you know, we're, this is a little stop for us here on planet Earth. And so we realize that um, for those people who sit in glass houses, you know, there are no more secrets, because everything comes out into the open. And yet we're still caught in our own BS, you know. Um, we walk around with gold, with rose colored glasses. And we think, um, that, um, we think that we're not affected by them, you know, yet we're really marionettes controlled by the powers that be. And so the dark has avoided judgment for decades and lifetimes, but no more, you know, the dark has caused misery via their power and their greed and their arrogance and their superiority. And so the dark laughs at the poor and the homeless, you know, and I've been there and I've been the butt of their jokes and the recipient of their scorn, you know, for far, far too long, you know, but um, some of you were there a year ago and some of you will be there a year from now. You know, it's, it's a difficult thing to hear, but it is the cycle that we go through and it's based on the, the choices that we make today are we going to shine our light? Are we going to follow the path of darkness uh, from which that we will have to learn many painful lessons? Or are we going to elevate ourselves to the point where, um, where we can kind of um, take the shorter route, for instance, to our own, uh, to recognize our own divinity, you know? So despite the sabotage, you know, that, um, that the dark is banking, the dark is banking on our not surviving. You know, they're uh, power hungry and they have delusions of grandeur. And so we really have reached the tipping point. It's enough. And millions and billions live in despair. And it's almost like one more drop and, you know, they go to the edge because there's nowhere else you can't hide anymore. You have to face yourself. And so... Um, the dark is long overdue to look at themselves in the mirror and to see themselves in ways that they don't want to see themselves because they don't want to see themselves as selfish and, and cruel and rude and power hungry and jealous. You know, they, those are not emotions that uh, the dark is comfortable with. <laughs> not at all, I can assure you. And so, um, so, in a state of delusion, you know, they also reject the notion of karma. Oh, I have here. There's some notification on my phone. Sorry. <laughs> so they, they reject the notion of karma. And um, the narcissists feel uh, forever entitled, you know. They rejoice in the pain of others. And so if you just think of all the systems in place in society that thrive when people are ill and suffering, you know, from religion to healthcare to virtually every business out there, um, promises to fix, to improve, to help, because human beings believe they desperately need fixing, that they desperately need improving, and that they desperately need help. So how many human beings actually feel whole in who they are? Do you know many? I don't, actually. Um, I don't know many human beings who feel good enough. And uh, at times, I think all of us uh, fall into that trap. And so what does the media and our society continue to preach? You know, that we need more, that we don't have enough, that we aren't good enough. You know, my family was the poster child of this dark and deluded mindset, you know, of the unspoken theme and the obsessive need 
to get, to, gr to get it, to grab it, to take it, to steal it in whatever way they could, to beg, borrow, and steal, and even kill. For the bottom line is, you know, um, do what you can to get what you need and to get what you think you're entitled to from whomever you can. You know, every man, woman, child is targeted to behold this insatiable need for more with appearance and dieting and exercise and designer labels and sugar and alcohol and addictions and obsessions and anything related to our physical, emotional, and mental, and certainly even spiritual bodies, you know? So we are all f us forever seeking more. And that's so unhealthy. And again, it's a microcosmic display of a, of a larger macrocosmic uh, pathology, actually. And so what we can see that in our own family structure. And then we can actually see that in our very selves. And so stealing some things, you know, stealing a few bank accounts, stealing a few clothes, stealing or blocking some videos, sabotaging some jobs, telling some lies, um, blocking some relationships, you know, is criminal, but it's not enough for some people. For instance, in my family, they had to take every one of my homes. They had to steal every bank account. They had to empty every, uh, every, article of clothing in my home. They had to steal every t-shirt and every coat and every pair of shoes. Every, every, every. That's the mindset. It's not about hurting someone halfway. It's about totally decimating them in every way possible. I mean, how pathological is that really? Um, and so what happens is everyone feels forsaken and every trust was violated, and every boundary was pushed to the max. And so this is the way our subconscious attracts the darkness. Yes, truly. And the dark, where crimes included, you know, the murder of my parents and the destruction of others, the humiliation, the defamation, the terrorizing of family, is is viewed to be acceptable because it's kind of a a man eat man person um out there um person versus person out there um human being versus human being out there it's um we're all fighting for survival and yet you know we all will survive because survival is relative and so we know as eternal beings as souls of course we're going to survive we may not be in physical manifestation on the earth plane but we survive because our soul is never ending and nothing and no one uh, can ever extinguish that light only our creator can can interfere with um with our with the longevity of who we are. And so, um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, so many people live cut off from their emotions and their feelings, and um, they experience the gamut of emotions of being human. And, you know, that's, that's healthy. Um, to experience the gamut of emotions because that's um, that's part of the the glory of being on planet Earth, and so some will dunk their little toe, you know, in the river, while others will jump headfirst uh, into the blackness of the void. So it really depends on how how brave are we and how committed are we to experiencing 
um, the best life we can and showing up as our very best self. Um, and so it becomes glaringly obvious then that um, the reason why criminals perpetuate criminality um, and every social structure on earth continues this downward spiral to go deeper and deeper into the bowels in which it finds itself um, prior to implosion, because ultimately that's that's what happens. I mean, it it's just... It implodes. And so we we can reach out and stop um, ourselves from this self-destruction. Uh, we don't have to blindly go down that route. And so there's no more delaying. You know, we must choose to, um, to enjoy the, enjoy our time here and not wallow in uh, the abyss where violence and hatred are the order of the day um, because we can choose the light of the Christ and where love is all there is, you know? It's more obvious than ever right now where we can see the evil that's out there and we can choose to not participate and we can choose to block it and choose our own path of light and so um, I think that's really where I'm going to end this. Um, and so I'm really excited about um, sharing more of how we can improve our life here on planet Earth by um, keeping those boundaries and seeing the world for what it is from a different perspective. Because again, we're not victims. And... Um, and so we can take charge of our life. And that's what we're here to do. And we're here to be strong and we're here to be brave. And we're not here to be anybody's punching bag or, um, yeah, or doormat. Absolutely not. And so um, let's continue this. And we're here to expose what we've been through so that we can help others become aware of what uh, may have been in their path in the past or what they might actually be going through now. And so when everybody is is hush-hush and they don't want to talk about it, nobody knows the trials and tribulations of another, you know, because everybody is just like, oh, I can't talk about it. Oh, oh, that's too, that's too painful. That's too, um, um, that's too forthcoming that's too uh personal well no it's time to really tell the truth and it's time to heal those wounds because you can't heal anything unless you face it right and so anyway i will um see you we'll continue on to um the next uh the next part and i will see you again and so in the meantime, I want you to know that I love you.